Hello everyone. Today I'll be demonstrating a way to make the compound magnesium oxide from its elements. Now I will admit that I've got several bottles of magnesium oxide already in my cabinets, but since this recipe involves fire, it's way more fun. First, we need a sample of magnesium. Magnesium is a metallic element, element number 12 on the periodic table, and it's usually kept in plastic bags like this because it is more, one of the more reactive elements and it will react with the air if you leave it out. The piece I'm going to use is approximately 10 inches long and I'm going to wrap it up in sort of a loose fitting ball because I need to fit it into my crucible and lid. This is my crucible, this is the lid, and together they make a nice little perfect container. First, we're gonna put our clean crucible on the balance, including the lid, and we'll see what it weighs. So its mass is 30.453 grams. Next, we'll put the magnesium in, and again, include the cap. And now my mass has risen to 30.870 grams. So by subtracting this, minus the weight of the crucible and lid, I will get the exact weight of my magnesium. And now for the fun part, we get to burn it. So I'm gonna take my crucible, put it up on this ring stand, ring clamp, clay triangle situation. And we're gonna get our Bunsen burner underneath here. Now I wanna get it into the hottest part of the flame. And if you don't know, the hottest part of the flame is the tip of the little blue cone on the Bunsen burner. Not the very edge, not the very bottom, but right at the tip of that cone. So I'm gonna to try to adjust it so we're right there. That ought to do it. All right, and here we go. You can see the bottom of the crucible has turned bright red hot and the magnesium is starting to react. You can see the oxygen reacting with it. And, oh, it's so cool. Look at it go. That's amazing stuff. Now I am going to put a, the cap on for just a brief time to try to capture some of that smoke and keep it in there. Um, but I'll leave it open a little bit because I do want oxygen to continue to circulate inside the crucible. You can see that it's still flaring up at times, so I know I'm not done yet. As oxygen gets into that container, it reacts with the magnesium and releases energy. And it's not done until I can see that there's no more flare ups. All right, so it's been off the heat for a couple of minutes, and you can definitely see a change has happened. While it used to be a shiny silvery metal strip, now you have this white stuff. And um, I wanna make sure that it's done reacting, so I'm going to actually add a few drops of water. And the water serves as a concentrated source of extra oxygen. And I'm gonna go ahead and reheat it, just to make sure that all the magnesium got reacted. So now that we're done heating it, we just have to let it cool and get the final mass. Here in the chem lab, we throw around chemical formulas all the time, like SO2 and NaCl and C6H1206. But have you ever wondered how it is that chemists even know what the formula of their compound is? Like they can't count the atoms individually, so how do they know? Turns out there are a number of ways to get clues as to what the chemical formula of your compound is. One of the simplest ways is to just simply know the masses of the elements in your compound as you make it. And if you know those masses of the elements in your compound, you're only a couple of quick taps of the calculator away from knowing your chemical formula. We call it an empirical formula because it is based on experimental data and it shows the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in your compound. It may or may not be the actual compound, but you're getting there. And for an ionic compound like this one, the empirical formula actually is the chemical formula that would be reported because ionic compounds are always written in lowest terms. And now time to find the final mass crucible on there. Again, the lid. And our final mass is 31.093 grams. Now you might be wondering, why did that mass go up during burning? And that's a fair question, because lots of times when we see things burning, like logs on a fire, they, they disappear, they go away, it looks like it's getting lighter. But really, when we burn something, we're adding oxygen from the air to the material that we're burning. 
and so it actually gets heavier. Now sometimes the products, as in the case of a burning log, are carbon dioxide and water vapor primarily, and those are gases at the time, and so they disappear, they leave. But in this case, my product is a solid. I actually added the oxygen to the magnesium to make magnesium oxide solid, and that oxygen then was trapped in the container, and the container became heavier. So now in the next episode, I'll show you how to use your calculator and tap it a couple times and get the formula of the magnesium oxide compound that we just made. See ya.